Hello, and welcome to Work Well with Stephanie Wolf, brought to you by the Whole Food Health Coach, LLC, where we make your goals our goals, and you're never alone on your wellness journey. Experience the information, inspiration, sorry about that, and collaboration of our Coach in Your Corner partnership. My name is Stephanie Wolf. I am a national board certified health and wellness coach and proud owner of the Whole Food Health Coach, now in its ninth year, and four-time winner of the Best of Gwinnett Award together with certified health coach Rachel Souza and Sherry Davis. We invite you to visit wholefoodhealthcoach.com to set up your 60-minute healthy living assessment. Our award-winning three-phase program is changing lives. Work Well is brought to you weekly and is dedicated to your personal and professional health and wellness. I offer examples from my own life, health, marriage, family, and business. I share my research, my opinion, my faith, and I do hope that I'm bringing you compelling content, engaging challenges, and practical body, soul, and spirit support during your wellness journey. Work Well comes to you from my personal desire to live long and strong with passion and purpose, die of old age, and help others to do the same. So let's do this. Today, I have a funny story for you. Hopefully, you you will find it funny and get a good chuckle out of it. It's called America's Smartest Woman. An airplane was about to crash. There were about five, there were five passengers on board, but only four parachutes. The first passenger said, I'm Michael Phelps, and I have won 16 Olympic gold medals, more than anyone in history. America can't afford to lose me, so he took the first pack and left the plane. The second passenger, Hillary Clinton, said, I'm the wife of a former U.S. president, a New York state senator, and a potential future president. I'm America's smartest woman and America's history, and people cannot want me to die. So she took the second pack and jumped out of the plane. The third passenger, Warren Buffett, said, I was just named the world's richest person with a net worth of $62 $62 billion. I do a lot of very genuous, generous things with my wealth, so the world cannot afford to lose me, so he took the third pack and jumped to safety. The fourth passenger, Billy Graham, said to the fifth passenger, a 10-year-old schoolgirl, I'm old and frail and don't have many years left as a Christian. I will sacrifice my life and let you have the last parachute. The girl said, it's okay, Mr. Graham. There's a parachute left for you. America's smartest woman just left with my book bag. I know if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that every week I try to make you laugh and inspire you and inform you with my Clean Concepts individual coaching program and all that I do. The CLEAN acronym stands for Character, Lifestyle, Exercise, Attitude, and Nutrition. I encourage you to challenge yourself to change something, to improve something, or let go of something, pick up something, start something, restart something, or at least begin a healthy self-dialogue or a dialogue with a health coach. All to fuel your excitement and generate movement towards your healthier self. That's what I'm all about. So January, we started off with Healthy New You. Then I've tried everything. Body Fuel was the next one. How are you filling your tank? And One Client's Perspective. We're in the month of February here, if you're listening live, and I love to talk about heart health during the month of February. So that's what we're going to be doing during this month. Today, it's show your heart some love. And next week, don't go breaking my heart. Now, in March, we're going to be launching Marvelous Marriage Marathon Month. So my guest host will be my amazing husband, Jack Wolf, of over well, 49 years during that month and actually on March the 23rd. So today, show your heart some love. Showing your heart some love this time of year is kind of interesting because it's Valentine's season and we love to talk about love during the Valentine's season. And of course, I want you to show your heart some love throughout the year, not just this month and not just on Valentine's Day. So if you do that, you will give back to your heart and your heart will give back to you a very long and healthy life. So the heart is a vital organ. 
Not news to you, I'm sure, but let's give our hearts some love today during the love month. Jack and I say, I love you with all of my heart. Maybe you've said that to your loved one. The Bible says, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. And we've heard people say, I cross my heart when we're promising something. Recently, I heard someone say, the heart wants what the heart wants. We say someone has a big heart or heart of gold or a man after my own heart. How about this one, wearing your heart on your sleeve? Is that possible? Or she has a bleeding heart, heavy heart, or heart of stone. Phew, that's a tough one. Ever told someone not to lose heart? Hear someone say, that broke my heart. Can your heart actually be broken? Or has anyone really ever stolen your heart? Ever have trouble telling someone something really difficult because you just didn't have the heart? Some mockingly say, eat your heart out. That gross if you took that physically. And how about this one? If you can find it in your heart, what exactly should we be looking for there? Not for the faint of a heart or from the bottom of my heart. Ever told someone to follow your heart or my heart goes out to you? Maybe you've had to pour out your heart or open your heart or even, as someone said, have a heart. Ever told someone, take heart or do something to their heart's content? Are you young at heart? I hope so. I am. Somebody stop me. I know. You know that my heart's in the right place as I tell you all these things. Okay, I'm done. Let's get to the heart of the matter. Our heart seems to be pretty important to us. We use that word a lot, obviously. It's in, a, it's in hundreds and hundreds of song titles and in songs. I only gave you about half of what I found. But we often take our heart for granted. Our heart and our brain, actually. And after all, we can't see either of them. I suppose that's why. We just know that they're there and we're glad that they perform as needed with little or no thought um, most of the time from ourselves. Our focus is usually on the more visual parts, I suppose, of our body or what hurts at the time. Sadly, once the heart begins to hurt, it's really in the danger zone. So don't go breaking my heart. That's next week. So I can't imagine living without my arms, my legs, or losing my eyesight, but I could live without them. I could still be alive. I would have limitations, but I would be alive. I think of the brave men and women of the military who've come back without those precious body parts, and I appreciate all that they have given for our country, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Difficult as their lives must be, so many of them are living with a meaningful life and living a meaningful life. And they're really an inspiration to others. I love giving to organizations that build houses that provide the necessities that our vets rely on. Uh, I think that's of utmost important, importance. And I can only imagine how difficult their lives are. But I do know that those who love them are extremely grateful to have them back alive. So to all of you, I say thank you. When I had breast cancer and the physician told me I would need a mastectomy to remove the cancerous breast, I wasn't thrilled about it. <laughs> I'd known quite I'd grown quite fond of them over the 40 years that we'd shared together, um, but I knew that I would live without a breast. My stepfather lost his eye to a severe infection connecting to actually other health issues that he had and other challenges, but he lived successfully without it. I teased Jack that losing his, he's losing his hearing, um, either that or he's not listening to me anymore, uh, but he could live without his hearing evidently. My breast wasn't a vital organ and Herb's eye wasn't a vital organ and hearing is not vital to living. 
the word vital means that the organ is absolutely necessary or essential to life. You cannot live without your heart. It's a vital organ, integral and to living and absolutely necessary. So do you done? I hope you understand what I'm saying here. The heart works hard for you day in and day out. It's keeping you alive. It's a, it's a vital organ. It's vital to your very existence. And if you're going to continue to do all of the amazing things that you love to do, like love, work, play, create, travel, and be with those that you love, you need to take care of your heart. All the things that make life worth living is what your heart is working hard to keep you doing. So I ask you, how are you showing love to your heart? I hope to keep asking you that, and I hope that you're saying thank you in real ways and practical ways to your heart for how hard it's working for you. So how are you taking care of this absolutely necessary, essential, vital organ that is trying to take care of you? Do you appreciate the work that it's doing right now, even as you're listening to me? Let me introduce you to your heart. It's the first step in any loving, lasting relationship. So your heart is actually located near the middle of your chest, slightly to the left. A normal heart, a human heart, actually is a strong muscle. It's a pump, and it's a little larger than your fist. This life-giving muscle weighs about one pound. The average human heart beats 72 beats a minute, so somewhere between 60 and 100 beats a minute, slower if you're ripped, faster if you're not. Each day, an average heart beats, in, and when I say that, think the word expand and contract, expand and contract. It actually beats that way 100,000 times a day. The heart pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood a day. 2,000 gallons every single day from your pinky toe to every hair follicle on your head. In a 70-year lifetime, an average human heart beats more than 2,000, I'm sorry, 2.5 billion times. So a 70-year-old lifetime, an average human heart beats more than 2 million, 2 billion, I'm not going to get that right, <laughs> 2.5 billion. Billion is a big number for someone who makes thousands. So 2.5 billion times. That's amazing to me. I've got an hourglass here on my table just to remind me, the old-fashioned hourglass, I might add, where the sand is slowly moving through the hourglass. And that just shows me how fast time goes and how we can't get back the sand that has already dropped from the hourglass, but there's still some sand left. And I want you to think about that in how you want to show your heart some love. So right now, with that in mind, I want you to try this. I want to encourage you, if you have a tennis ball handy, this is a great way to do it. But even if you don't, just lay your forearm in front of you, um, your right one, if you're right-handed, your left one, if you're left-handed. So your predominant hand. So lay it on the desk, palm facing up. Are you doing it? Come on. Now you can set a timer for one minute if you aren't faint of heart. And um, hopefully you're doing it already. So I'll wait while you get a tennis ball or set your timer. But what I need you to do is to make a fist and then release the fist. And make a fist and release a fist. So fully and rhythmatically is what we're looking for. As many times as you can for one minute. Making the fist and relieving. And making the fist and releasing it. So you may get tired probably before one minute of opening and closing your fist. But your heart needs to pump all day long like that. Every day without taking a single break. So are you starting to fall more in love with your heart? So hopefully you did that little activity with me. I was doing it right here um, at the microphone because it reminds me of how valuable my heart is. And the more weight that I carry around, then the harder that 
heart has to work. So let's um, take our love fest, I guess, for the heart uh, to another level. So the heart begins to fill with blood. So when the heart is filling with blood, it's like when your hand is open. And then when your heart pumps the blood through the rest of your body, it's like your hand is squeezing that fist. So your heart squeezes that blood and pumps it through your body. Each time your heart beats, it pumps out oxygen and nutrient-rich blood into your body. Your blood flows through a network of vessels um, called the circulatory system. When your blood returns to your heart, it flows through your lungs to receive oxygen. Then the heart pumps that blood out through the rest of your body and the process begins again. Wow, I'm exhausted just thinking about how hard this vital organ is working for me. I appreciate it. But we're not done with this anatomy lesson just yet. So continue to build your love relationship with your heart. We're going to love our heart from right to left now. So here's how it works. So from on the right side, oxygen poor blood from all over your body enters your right atrium through two large veins. Your your inferior vena cavita. Sorry, I can't say that. Um, <laughs> your inferior vena cava and your superior vena cava. Mm -hmm. I can read it. I just can't say it. And then your tricuspid valve opens up so that that blood can travel from your right atrium now to your right ventricle. When the right ventricle is full, it squeezes and then it closes your tricuspid valve to prevent backflow so that it opens your uh, pulmonary valve and then blood flows through your pulmonary artery to your lungs where it gets oxygen. Now your left side is simultaneously working for you. Oxygen rich blood then travels from your lungs to your left atrium through large veins called pulmonary veins. Your met it's a mitral valve opens to send blood from your left atrium to your left ventricle. When your left ventricle now is full, it squeezes and closes your mitral valve and opens your aortic valve. Your heart sends blood through your aortic valve to your aorta, where it flows to the rest of your body. All of that is happening right now as I'm speaking, or as I'm trying to speak, and all happening every moment of every day without us even thinking about it. It's in autopilot. It's miraculous. Evolution, I think not. Too detailed, too delicate, too powerful. Your blood travels through several miles of blood vessels and the cells of your body need oxygen to survive and that's why that blood is so important. Red blood cells carry oxygen. The more oxygen your body gets, the more energy you will have. A higher, um, a person's heart rate the greater the demand for that oxygen. In other words, as your heart rate goes up, so does the need for more oxygen. We breathe harder, pulling air and more air into our system, which eventually goes into our bloodstream. So exercise your heart. If you wanna keep it strong, healthy, and happy, then this is why this is so important. Exercise and because the muscle uh, of the heart is a muscle just like every other muscle that we use, the muscles in our body. So heart is a muscle and one that needs the most love. So if you love your muscles, love your heart and take good care of it and it'll take good care of you. So the stronger the heart is, the easier the pumping and the cleaner the blood flow and the more oxygen in the bloodstream. It all sounds really complicated but it's not as complicated as we make it sometimes when we ignore it. So we're not gonna ignore it anymore. So I've told you these stats before, but the reason um, that I stay in business as a whole food health coach is because of these stats. So I'm gonna mention them one more time. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. One in four deaths are related to it. Stroke is the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, and smoking are major risks. 
Diabetes, number seven, causes more deaths in the United States than the other uh, those below. So the seventh leading cause of death. 100 million people in the U.S. have diabetes. So to give you some perspective, it was uh, about five years ago, it was 30 million. So it's definitely going up, up, up. Obesity rates are soaring, and there's so many other health-related diseases that are connected to that. Um, I could go on and on, but 32 million Americans are taking a statin for high cholesterol. And remember, 70 to 80 percent of diseases that we suffer with are preventable. So I'm trying to help you to prevent cardiovascular disease and being one in four deaths that are related to that. I want my listening audience to be healthy. That's why I'm doing this and sponsoring um, this particular show because I want you to be well. And that's what I talk about. So if you're listening to this podcast, you're likely wanting to show your heart some love. So let's get to it. To love your heart and keep it healthy and happy and working long and strong for you, here's a couple of tips that I want to leave you with. The first is watch your numbers. Get regular checkups to monitor your health conditions that affect the heart, your blood pressure, cholesterol, and especially diabetes. Make sure that these numbers are within a healthy range and are at least under control. And by control, I don't mean relying solely on medications, or you will be forced to rely solely on medications. Do your part to make the appropriate changes and lifestyle adjustments to bring those numbers down. So what was number one? Watch your numbers. Know what they are. The next is watch your weight. It's a part of the number, but not as much a part if you're looking at that total number on the scale. I hate the scale as much as anybody else does, but it's just a messenger. So don't shoot the messenger. It's important to know because it's a part of the risk indicator um, that we look at. So don't ignore it. Too many pounds can increase the heart disease risk and also maintain a healthy body weight. Um, So maintaining that healthy body weight for your size is really important to your heart. Your heart will appreciate you for it. At the Whole Food Health Coach, we work with our clients to bring down all numbers. You cannot change what you cannot measure. A clearly defined problem is half the solution. We tell our clients that all the time. So watch your waist. A women's measurements at the waist should be less than 35 inches around which is about, your waist is about one inch above your belly button. And men should be less than 30 inches at the waist. Less than. Uh, Your hip is about seven inches below that or your belly button. So the thickest part of your behind is what we're measuring there. So your hip to waist ratio should be less than 0.95 for men and 0.80 Uh, for women. And it's calculated by dividing, of course, your waist measurement by your hip measurement. So if you need to um, listen to this podcast again, please do so to get those numbers so that you know what you're measuring. The next, of course, you couldn't uh, hear this broadcast without me saying eat a heart healthy diet. We are going to talk a little bit more in depth about some of those things in the coming podcasts. But load up on fresh vegetables, fruits, berries, nuts, seeds, and about 10 ounces of healthy wild-caught salmon a week. Uh, It's super important for you to keep that in mind. Limit sugar, saturated fat, salt, and fatty meats, or especially those ultra-processed meats. Stop eating crap. You've heard me say it. And if you don't know what crap stands for, then you have to go back and listen to some other podcasts to find out. So protect your microbiome is the next one. Once upon a time, it was believed that serotonin, or also known as the happiness hormone, um, was produced only in the brain. But there's several breakthrough studies now that have revealed that 90% of serotonin, or that feel-good hormone, is actually produced by our gut bacteria. And this has led researchers to look into the power of the gut-brain access and um, to help us treat anxiety, depression, and other mental health disorders. There's a lot going on in a body when it comes to mental health and depression. There's things that we can do for ourselves. It's not always from the neck up. 
And these go hand in hand, the gut and the brain. So there's a systematic review um, that was done in this particular study that I read of 10 human trials um, published in the annals of um, general psychiatry found that consuming gut bacteria or healthy bac uh, bacteria, those probiotics, can help alleviate feelings of depression and anxiety in, in, is in as little as 20 days. So a lot can be done by just eating well. It's not necessarily about taking probiotics and be careful with that as well. Just know where to get healthy probiotics uh, from foods that you eat. The next is reducing alcohol intake. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, except to say that too much alcohol consumption can worsen all health conditions and contribute to heart disease. One of our um, topics in phase one is healthy beverages. So we talk about everything liquid um, from water to kombucha to different types of alcohol and how to consume them responsibly responsibly and in a healthy way. And then minimizing stress. I know it's easier said than done, that's for sure, but stress can compound heart disease and it, it can increase those risks. So talk to a health coach like us and uh, we can help you to effectively produce ways that can lower that stress and therefore lower your risk of heart disease and the other stress-related maladies. So I love Proverbs 12, 25 says, worry weighs a person down and an encouraging word cheers a person up. So ways to minimize your stress, listening to heart healthy music and good um, relaxing podcasts and uh, some things that I enjoy reading scriptures. But right now I want you to try something with me. Take three slow, deep breaths to help your body build up that strong oxygen supply that it's gonna send through your body in your bloodstream. So when stressed, try what we call the four, seven, eight method, which is to inhale to the count of four, hold for the count of seven, and exhale for the count of eight. In other words, expelling more air um, completely beyond that which you took in at your count. So. Breathing in to the count of four, three, two, one. Hold to the count of seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale the count of eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm sure you feel better already. The next, we're going to talk about exercise, but that's going to be a whole topic for next month. I'm sorry, next podcast. So exercise, getting enough. You just need 30 minutes of exercise almost every day of the week. I recommend five days a week of a minimum of 30 minutes a day. So don't just do it all at once and think you've got your 150 minutes in because that's not loving your heart. Your heart loves consistency and it is consistently working for you all day long. So hopefully you do the, the little activity I had you do if you find a tennis ball or just try and see if you can pump that fist for a whole minute and then remember how hard your heart is, heart is working for you. So hopefully you have fallen a little bit more in love with your heart today and don't let your love between you and your heart be only one-sided don't let your heart love you more than you love your heart show your heart some love every single day and it will love you well for many years You've been listening to Work Well with Stephanie Wolf, brought to you by the Whole Food Health Coach LLC, where we make your goals our goals, and you're never alone on your wellness journey. If you're new to this program, I invite you to listen on your favorite podcast channel, and it's easy to get caught up. Just say, Alexa, play Work Well with Stephanie Wolf. For information about our upcoming virtual classes or our individual coaching programs, go to wholefoodhealthcoach.com. Our coaching is available virtually anywhere in the country. I'm Stephanie Wolf, wishing you well, personally and professionally. See you next week live or on your favorite podcast channel. Until then, choose life.